Good morning, this is Ian King Live, an hour of business and economic news from the heart of the city. Now, Sri Lanka has asked the International Monetary Fund for urgent help following a financial crisis that has engulfed the island state. It's halted its debt payments, stoking fears that its economy could be about to collapse. Protests have erupted in the country over food shortages and soaring fuel prices. Well, joining me now from the Sri Lankan capital, Colombo, is Mataza Jaffaji, chair of the Advocata Institute and elected director of the Colombo Stock Exchange. Morning to you, sir. How did... Sri Lanka come to be in this state? Well, uh, leading up to a change in government, this new government came in in 2019. Country's economy was slowing because there were many macroeconomic shocks that were, had happened before that, and we were carrying a lot out of debt. The new government, with the aim of stimulating the economy, put across some very aggressive tax cuts. They lost about 35% of their revenue, and then COVID hit us. So when COVID hit us, uh, international euro bonds started trading at about a 30% discount to book value. And uh, the rating was cut and we were unable to roll over our debt. And COVID continued and you know commodity prices and the Ukrainian war came. So we simply ran out of reserves and we had to put a cessation, a temporary suspension on debt service payments. Now, around a fifth of Sri Lanka's debt is owed to Japan and to China. How likely are they to show forbearance? Well, we have already requested them, the bilateral creditors, to do some kind of deferment. Uh, the problem is that both the Japanese and the Chinese don't generally like to do restructuring. Japan is a member of the Paris Club. China is not a member of the Paris Club. So because of the precedence that will be set for other uh, data nations. They have been extremely reluctant to do it. So I'm afraid that it's going to be a tough negotiation process going ahead. What about uh, India? I gather India has been offering bilateral aid. Yes, they have been a country of last resort that we have turned to. And as the Indian uh, foreign minister said, neighbours first. So they are going out of their way to help us. Um, Sri Lanka has never defaulted on its debts in its history, despite three decades of civil war. Do you fear that that is likely this time? Yes, yeah, so they have already indicated that uh, they are going to uh, have a temporary suspension. And yesterday, basically, there was a coupon payment due on euro bonds, on two euro bonds. And there is a 30-day grace period on that coupon period. So technically, we, we have not paid on the due date. But we will not be in default till 30 days thereafter. Now, President Rajapaksa yesterday announced a cabinet reshuffle in which he removed two of his brothers and a nephew from cabinet. Is that going to be enough to assuage some of the anger that's being seen on the streets? Uh, well, basically, uh, you know, the anger, uh, they are portraying it with a hashtag saying, Gotha, go home. And Gotha is the name of the president. So the fact that few Rajapaksas have not been reappointed probably will have some impact. But the key uh, message that the crowds are calling for is for the president to go home. So that remains unresolved. You mentioned just now that uh, obviously the pandemic exacerbated difficulties in the economy, for example, in depriving Sri Lanka of tourist revenues. Do you worry that there are other emerging economies that are likely to face a similar crunch? Yes, so the, we will be first one to have defaulted for this year, but it is expected that there are many, many other economies who are in a very vulnerable position and with US interest rates going up, outlook for many emerging market uh, issuers is going to be very challenging. All right, Matilda Jaffaji, thank you very much indeed for joining me today. It's much appreciated. Thank you.